Praise God. Merry Christmas. This morning, I want to talk to you about Christmas presents. Christmas presents. Now, a little bit of a play, a play on words here. It's not Christmas presents, but it's Christmas presents, okay? Christmas presents. When we think about Christmas, we automatically think about presents, don't we? How many be honest this morning and say, I like to get presents at Christmas? You really do. You know, I think that's, that's the way we are. We like to get presents, and especially children. I love uh, this past Sunday afternoon, we had a Christmas with our kids because of, you know, when your kids get married and have their own kids, they do their own thing. We have to work Christmas in with them as we can. And so this past week, we had Christmas with our kids and our grandkids, and the joy of my heart was seeing my two three-year-old grandchildren tear into their presents. Wow. It was so fun to watch them. And it's amazing. It's the little cheap things that get their attention more than the expensive stuff, isn't it? You know, we can spend big bucks on Christmas gifts for the little ones, but it's the little cheapy stuff. My, my, one of my little granddaughters uh, got a little, uh, what's that thing called, honey? Both of them got a paddle board, you know, that's got the, the ball on the end of the rubber band, and you hit it with the paddle. Oh, she loved that. That's, huh? Yeah, they went wild over that. They loved it. I, I just love watching children as they, you know, as they just connect with, with Christmas and opening the gifts and so forth. And I, I want to give you some letters just briefly here, some Santa letters from children that I think are somewhat comical. Can I do that? just for a moment as I open this. These are some Christmas letters to Santa from children that I think are, are comical and I think you'll agree. Uh, here's one. Dear Santa, you did not bring me anything good last year. You did not bring me anything good the year before that. This is your last chance. And it's signed Alfred. All right. Here's another cute one. Dear Santa... There are three little boys who live at our house. There is Jeffrey. He is two. There is David. He is four. And there is Norman. He is seven. Jeffrey is good some of the time. Letters to Santa. Jeffrey is good some of the time. Jeffrey's two. David is good some of the time. David's four. But Norman is good all the time. And it's signed, I am Norman. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, Norman's good all the time. Here's another cute one that some of you can relate to. Dear Santa, I wish my dad's truck will be unstuck. If Santa can grant that wish, it will be a miracle. <clears throat> Dear Santa, you better bring me a pony this year or there will be consequences. Hmm. I don't know what that's going to involve, but he sounds pretty serious there. Bring me a pony this year or there will be consequences. All of these are true letters that have been sent to Santa Claus. You know, it's funny. It's just, it's just nice to read stuff like this. It just kind of brightens the atmosphere, doesn't it, when we, when we think about children and their heart and, and how they get into to Christmas time. You know, Christmas is all about giving, and God loves to give to us. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now, we don't typically think about that as being a verse that we would use at Christmas time, but yet it's true. When we think about how faithful God is, and how good God is, and that every good and perfect gift that we receive ultimately comes from God. Down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Church, God loves to give good gifts to His children. And the great thing about it is this, you don't have to wait until Christmas morning to open the gifts that God gives to us on a daily basis. 
you, we are recipients of the manifold grace of God every single day of our lives. And every day, God gives good things, good gifts to His children. And I want to announce to you this morning that Jesus Christ is the greatest present from heaven that one could ever receive. Of all the good gifts that we could ever receive from God, without question, Jesus is the greatest. A few weeks ago, I preached about God's indescribable gift. Thanks be unto God for His gift that's too wonderful for words. We have difficulty even expressing in human terminology the greatness of the gift of God that He has given through Christ. Last week, I preached to you a message about uh, the greatest message ever proclaimed when the angels came and announced the birth of Jesus to the shepherds. God was doing something wonderful for humanity in sending His Son, Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Matthew 1.23 says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Matthew is referring back to the prophet Isaiah, who prophesied of the birth of Jesus hundreds of years before it ever came to pass. That this special gift that God was going to send would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us, God present with us in the flesh. Christmas presence. Christmas presence. John 1.14, And the Word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Just stop and ponder that statement just a moment. And God, the Word, became flesh and, dwelt, and tabernacled among us, dwelt among us. And John writes, we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Man, that's enough to really grip you, isn't it? To think about the greatness of our God. Isaiah 9 and 6, For unto us a child is born. We've already heard the verse this morning. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. For unto us, unto you, a child is born. And that child is Jesus Christ. That's why we're here today. We're celebrating the faithfulness of our God. We're celebrating the fact that God has met the greatest need of humanity, and that need is that we all be saved, that we all come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we come to a knowledge of God and His favor, and that is made possible through the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that God became a human being, he became one of us. And I want to declare to you now, He is with us now by His Spirit. Just because Jesus was crucified and died and rose again and has gone back to heaven, that does not mean that He is not with us now. He is still here with us, present by His Holy Spirit. And surely we, being Pentecostal people, can have a, a great appreciation of the very fact that the Holy Spirit makes Christ real in us. He is, he is inside of us by the power of His Spirit. I'm thankful for the presence of Jesus. I'm thankful for Christmas presence and for what it brings to us. First of all, Christmas presence brings us great joy. Then the angel said to them, and I shared these verses last week, but they bear repeating. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. Psalm chapter 32 verses 1 through 5 says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven whose sin is put out of sight. 
Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide all my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Hallelujah. I can relate to that. This is a, a passage that deals with salvation. This is a passage that deals with the joy of the, in the fact that our guilt is gone, that we have been forgiven of all of our sins through Jesus Christ. Verse 11 in that same psalm says, So rejoice in the Lord and be glad, all you who obey Him. Shout for joy, all whose hearts are pure. This, this Christmas presence, this coming of Jesus to this world 2,000 years ago is a source of great joy because it enables us to be forgiven of all of our sins. I, I want you to know today that the great need of humanity is to be forgiven of our sins. We cannot be good enough. We cannot do enough good works. We cannot, in our own way, pull, up, pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and be, and be accepted in the eyes of God. That only comes through Jesus Christ. You may be here this morning and you may consider yourself to be just a fine person, an upstanding citizen, just a good person, a good parent. A, 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 good, a good spouse, a good neighbor. You may think you've got it all together, but let me tell you something. If you, don't need, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're missing it. You don't know what joy is all about because joy only comes into the lives of those who have accepted Jesus Christ and made Him Lord of their lives. So rejoice in the Lord. And be glad, all you who obey Him, shout for joy, all whose hearts are pure. I'm almost tempted to have you shout for joy. <laughs> this is why the gospel is good news. This is why the gospel is good tidings of great joy, and it's to all people. You see, the load of sin has been dealt with. It's been removed. It's plagued us since the Garden of Eden, but now it's been removed through Jesus Christ. God has provided a remedy. Psalm 12, In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord Himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. And I love this part. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. The coming of Jesus is the source of great joy. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done, and proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for He has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Joy. Joy unspeakable. And full of glory. That kind of joy cannot be found anywhere except in Jesus Christ. The angel had it right. I bring you good tidings of great joy. And friends, if there's nothing else going right in your life tonight or today, if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then you can be joyful. You can be joyful. Because your life is in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. 
We need to follow the example of the angels by sharing the joy of Jesus. We need to follow the example of the shepherds who went and checked out for themselves to see if what they had been told was true. And then what did they do? They went everywhere and shared the good news that a babe had been born, Christ the Lord, Emmanuel, God with us. I tell you, church, the coming of Jesus to this world is the source of great joy. It's the source of happiness. It's the source of gaiety. When nothing else seems right, to know that Jesus Christ lives makes everything right. There's freedom from fear that comes through the presence of Jesus Christ. We're talking about Christmas presence, the presence of Jesus. There's freedom from fear. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood, upon, uh, stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. When the angel said, Do not be afraid, he was telling them and us that we have a choice either to fear or not to fear. We have a choice to fear or not to fear. The Bible tells us that fear has torment, and it does. When we allow fear to grip our lives over any situation, there is a tormenting factor that results from that fear that grips us. Many people today are tormented by a fear of something, full of fear and worry about issues of life. I like to watch Charlie Brown Christmas special every year. I'm still a kid. That, that cartoon, Charles Schultz, who's dead now, but was a great Christian man. And if you've watched Charlie Brown Christmas, you know that at the end of that, he gives what Christmas is all about, doesn't he? Well, I like the part, can I, just, can I just kind of talk just a moment about that? I'm going to anyway because I get the mic. <laughs> but I like that Charlie Brown, that Charlie Brown Christmas special because, because Charlie Brown is so down and he is so depressed. Everybody else is getting into the, the joy of Christmas. Even his dog Snoopy is getting into it. He's decorated his house. He's entered a contest. For the, for, the, for the most beautifully decorated house, and he's decorating his dog house for Christmas. And, Char and Charlie Brown's response, as it always is, is good grief. Now, you might as well laugh. You know it's true. Good grief. And he's so down and he's so depressed. And he makes the mistake of going to Lucy, who has set up a little stand out, outside, and she says she's the, that she's a psychiatrist. And, and so he goes and he pays her uh, the five cents to get her advice, and she begins to go through a list of phobias and fears. Do you have this phobia? Do you have this phobia? And there's five or six of them that, that she lists. And he says, no, none of those apply to me. And then she said, well, maybe, maybe you have pantophobia. And he says, that's it. Because that means a fear of everything. P Pantophobia is a fear of everything. And friends, you know, that, it's comical to think about it, but there are people who live in today's world with a fear of everything. Fear of everything. Fear grips their heart and they live in a state of fear and anxiety all the time of their lives. But friends, is that, is that God's plan for us? If, if Christmas says anything to us, the coming of Jesus, this Christmas presence says we should have great joy and that we don't need to be afraid of anything because we are the people of God that He has redeemed. The Bible says in Psalm 27, 1 through 3, The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord protects me from danger, so why should I tremble? 
When evil people come to destroy me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will know no fear. Even if they attack me, I remain confident. Isn't that powerful? That we don't have to be afraid because the Lord is our light in our salvation. And if you're in this room today and you're just living under a cloud of fear and anxiety about stuff in your life, maybe you just have a fear of everything. Let me tell you, friends, there is someone whose name is Jesus who has come to be the answer for your problem and He does not want you to be afraid. We heard a song this morning. This is Naomi's favorite Christmas song. All is well. And she wanted Joy Miranda to do this song today. And and I'm, I'm thankful that they were able to do it. But the message of the song is, all is well. All is well. And friends, if everything is well, that means everything's okay. And we don't have to fret about anything. We don't have to worry about anything. Read Psalm 37. The Bible says in several times in that passage, do not fret, do not fret, do not fret. We don't have to worry or fret about anything. We don't have to be afraid. No matter what's happening in the world today, God is still on the throne. All is well. David said he would fear no evil even when walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith trusts God in His goodness. Read Hebrews 11. The great heroes of faith who trusted in God and who were overcomers because of their faith. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. The more we know how much God loves us, the more we will trust and the less we will fear. How do I know God loves me? Because He sent Jesus. I don't know why, but he loved us so much. It's his nature. God is love. He loved the human race. Adam and Eve dropped the ball in the Garden of Eden, but still God loved. He clothed them with skins, which was a type of uh, of sacrifice, vicarious offering. He clothed them so that their nakedness would be covered. And friends, we have been clothed by the righteousness of Jesus Christ We have nothing to fear. All is well. All is well. And then there is peace. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Luke 2, 13 through 14. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. I've already read this, but I'm going to read it again. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Peace. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. John 16, 33. These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Man, that's encouraging to me. That he wants me and you to have peace. That he is the prince of peace and he gives peace to those who need it. Now, notice Jesus did not say that our lives would be free from trouble. But he said we could have peace in the midst of trouble. We have prayed this morning around this altar with people who are going through some issues, some troubles. Some of you this week have heard news that is troubling news to you. But God's got it. He's still in control. He gives peace in the midst of everything that we go through in life. I remember uh, a year ago in September when, when my dad, my 95-year-old dad, got sick and was in the hospital, and he, and he got some news. Out of, out of that, the diagnosis wasn't good. But, you know, when we shared the news with him, he, he wasn't the least bit moved by it. He said, it's okay. I, I'm trusting God with this. And you could just sense such peace 
in the room as that 95-year-old man just knew that his faith was in God and everything was going to be okay. Beloved, we can have peace in the midst of our trouble and you can have peace in the midst of your issues today. Because God cares. How do we experience the peace God promises? Well, I like what Philippians chapter 4 says. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. That's the answer. How can we experience the peace that God promises? Well, don't worry about it. Instead, pray about it. Don't let it keep you awake at night. Let God handle it. Let God give you His peace. God knows what you need. Thank Him for all that He has done. Thank Him for what He's going to do. And you will experience God's peace that exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. What a way to end the year. What a way to end the year. To know that God's got my life. I I like a scripture that says that my life is bound up in the bundle of the living with the Lord. My life is bound up. That's That's what Abigail told David a long time ago when David was going through some stuff. She said, your life is bound up in the bundle of life with the Lord. And friends, that applies to all of us. Our lives are in His care and safekeeping and He's going to take care of His children. He sent Jesus to us. And if He sent Jesus to us, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things that we need to make it and exist in this life until He calls us home? Yeah, there there are going to be problems. Don't don't listen to this stuff that says if you're really a, a child of God and you're living where you need to be, you won't have any problems. That's a bunch of malarkey. Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And even though we as God's people go through stuff, we know that he's a good God and he's going to care for his people. This Christmas, God wants you to experience Christmas presence. The very presence of Christ in your life. Not just on Christmas Day when it rolls around Wednesday morning, but through all the year. Through all the year, you can experience the greatest gift of all, the very presence of Jesus Christ. And because of His presence, you can have great joy. You can have freedom from whatever you're afraid of and whatever's troubling you, and you can have His peace that passes all understanding. I'm so thankful for the peace of God. I'm so thankful for the very presence of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, God with us. And I want to tell you, friend, he's with you today. Yeah, he's with you today. Somebody needs to know this, that he is with you today. And what you're going through, You may be even mad at God because God hasn't worked things the way you think they ought to be worked out. But friends, God's in control and not you, not me. And I've got to trust His care and His love for me that He knows what's best and that He cares for us. Christmas presence, Jesus among us tells us I can have joy I don't have to be afraid, and I can have peace because God's on the throne. God's on the throne. Would you just stand with me today, this morning, and I just want you to thank Him in your own way. I just want you to thank Him in your own way for loving you and making provision for you today. Will you do that with me right now on this this Sunday before Christmas? 
Will you just thank the Lord for His faithfulness and for His goodness? God is good. God is good. Lord, we praise You. Lord, we praise You. We bless You. We honor You, Lord. We bless You. We honor You today, Lord Jesus. You're in control of our lives. You're in control of our lives, Lord. All is well. All is well. And we honor you today. We honor you today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I want you to close your eyes. I'm not looking, no one looking around. If you're here today and you're troubled and you're anxious about something, you're disturbed, I want to tell you, God has a plan for your life and all He wants you to do is trust Him. All He wants you you to do is just trust Him. I love the verse that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Or another version says, He'll make your paths straight. All He wants you to do is trust Him. But I want to pray with you this morning. We're going to pray with you today. Preacher, I'm here and I'm just just bothered and I'm disturbed. I'm, I'm, I'm fearful, afraid, I'm anxious. And I just need, I just need God's special presence through Christ to touch me today and to help me, to give me what I need, the assurance that I need to be able to keep moving forward into the year 2020 that's just ahead. I need His grace and His power. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I'm just troubled. I need some help. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, yeah. See your hands. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Oh, a bunch of hands bunch of hands church can we pray for these people can we just pray that God I've seen probably half a dozen more hands raised this morning of people who say I just need some peace I need some help I want to tell you friends you've come to the right place you've come to the right place because God is for you and if God is for you nothing can be against you You may not have the answer. You may be wondering what God's doing. But the very presence of Jesus Christ assures us. The very coming of Jesus assures us that all is well. That all is well. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these hands that I've seen raised in this room this morning. People are troubled. People are needy. They're anxious. They're concerned about stuff in life. They're fearful. Lord, maybe they have that Charlie Brown kind of fear that just everything is overwhelming them. But God, today, you're in this room to bless, to help, to heal, to restore, to give exactly what is needed to these dear ones who need your peace and your help this morning. And God, I'm asking in your name that you would reach down your hand upon every one of them and give them what they need, that they can leave this place today with the assurance that even though they may not feel it now, that they can say by faith, all is well. All is well because you're in control, God. You're in control, God. Maybe the bad news has gripped us this week, but you're still in control. Maybe we've heard some disconcerting news, but you're still in control. All is well. And I'm asking for your peace to settle upon these dear ones this morning and that you would give them exactly what they need, Father, to be able to rise above and face this year that's ahead with hope, faith, and optimism that God's in control. And if God is in control, it's all okay. It's all okay. And you want us to be one of those heroes of faith of Hebrews 11 who will simply dare to trust God even against the odds. We trust you today. We trust you today. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. 
Now let's just give Him praise this morning, church. Let's just give Him praise this morning. He's a good God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Christmas presents. Thank you for Christmas presents, Lord. Thank you for joy. Thank you for freedom from fear. Thank you for peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray that God will bless you, friends, this week and give you the merriest Christmas that you have ever had. That this would be just a, a one for the record books for you. And that you would just enjoy the very presence and the favor of God as you gather with friends and family this week. May this be a blessed, blessed holiday season for you. Again, these altars are still open. If you need prayer for anything, you're invited to come. If you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept Him today. Make Him Lord of your life. And let it be known of that decision that you have made to accept Him as your Savior and your Lord. That would be the greatest gift you could ever receive. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Christmas season. We'll see you again next Sunday. Amen.